you for joining us. Um, when I say us, it means myself and I have Tracy from our support team here on our webinar today. And we're gonna talk about setting up an online auction using Octria. If you could do me a favor, drop in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a little chat box. I'd love to know exactly where you're calling in from and what kind of team you're supporting, um, what kind of charity or who you're fundraising for, because um, that helps me uh, connect, get an idea who's on the line. And a lot of times it builds a little bit of a community here off our webinars and people connect offline also. So it's really nice to see geographically where everybody's coming from and some charities. Tracy, did you wanna say hello? Uh, yes, thanks Lori and thanks for having me. It's really great to be here today. Thanks for your time, Tracy. I appreciate it. So, and I thank everybody for joining us today. The purpose of this webinar is setting up an online auction utilizing Octria. So our goal is to help fundraising groups make the most out of their auction fundraiser. And this webinar is part of an ongoing series with exclusive content from Octria. I tried to get this under 20 minutes and I'm at like 23 minutes. So I'm gonna blow through a lot of information really quickly, but I wanna make sure that you have all the information so that you can go back and um, help yourself make your online auction fabulous. So let me move on. If you aren't aware about Octria, um, Octria was founded in 2011 as charity auction organizer. We updated our name and logo to Octria in 2016. Like so many awesome tools, this program was designed out of need. We too were tired of paper bid sheets, unorganized tracking, long cumbersome checkouts, and there had to be a better way. So our founder brilliantly developed Octria from the ground up, taking into account the entire auction process of running an auction fundraiser from the very first donation to the last receipt and all the bidding in between. Octria has supported 28.6 thousand auctions. That means 3.3 million bidders, 1.8 million items, and over $170 million have been raised by awesome teams like you guys. But still, every day is new and we're always appreciative of feedback. And we um, are always looking for feedback for our content, for our webinars, as well as for the product. So now that I told you a little bit about Octria, I'm going to ask you to tell me a little bit about you as I read through your comments here. North Penn YMCA, I heard they're closing Lansdale and Upper Marion and all that. Um, Colleen, I see. That's where my family's from. Oh, another Lansdale. Are you guys friends? Let's talk a little bit about the agenda here. We're going to start from ground zero by setting up the auction organization and the auction event. We'll talk about adding a donor and an item, setting up the website. What do bidders see? And besides setting up, I wanna always close the circle and talk about close out, check out and reports. So just to remind you, online auctions are run entirely electronically on the auction website. There are no paper bid sheets or auctioneer involved. There's no event, live event per se. Items are offered for bidding over a pre-selected time frame, which can be extended over multiple days or weeks, and bidders place their bids for their auction items through the website or mobile app. So let me just give you an overview of the visual visualization of the hierarchy of your Octria organization license. The organization is at the top, of course, and the organization is the one that purchased and is the owner of the license. So if you did bronze, you have two events. If you have silver, you can have four events a year and gold is eight. The organization level details were most likely set up upon purchase. However, now is always a good time to review the details. At the org level, this is where you're going to set up your organization logo, your credit card connections, your social media links, and donors. Each event then has its own items, bidders, website. And what's really cool is you can set user admin by event too. So let's look at this a little closer. This is your dashboard. Even if you've just logged in, you've probably seen your dashboard. Yours probably has a couple zeros in it and doesn't have any information loaded, of course. But these are the pretty boxes in the middle. It's the central part of your auction dashboard and it provides an overview for your entire auction. Number one, I wanna draw your attention to the yellow circle. Inside that, you'll see a plus sign. 
This plus sign indicates you can do a quick add to those areas. And there's two of those, one for items and one for bidders. So going back to the dashboard as an overview, you get a bird's eye view of the entire auction in terms of numbers, number of items, number of bidders, your total income. You also have fingertip access to some of the most important setup features. You can easily view your online registration status to see if it's enabled or turned off. You can see what your auction website URL is that you created. You can check your credit card status and you can also see if you're in test mode or live mode. The texting phone number, if you did purchase the extra little um, texting plan that would be listed there with your texting phone number. And of course your Octria status is in view on there too. So number two is the item summary. This is the item summary that shows the quantity of the items that are currently loaded into the system. You can click any blue text type to see details and drill down. For number three is the income summary. The income summary shows a breakdown of income sources and provides quick links for details also. Here you'll see your donor donations, closed bids, and in-progress activity, which is really exciting when you're doing online auctions. As soon as it starts to close, you see all those numbers start to roll up. So you can click on any of the blue icon types to see those details. And if you've been hanging around Octria for any length of time, whether it is 10 minutes or nine years, you'll know that there's usually a few ways to accomplish the same task. So this allows the user to find their own comfort zone. So everything you see here, it's not a one shot deal. You can get to things multiple ways. Let's talk about setting up the organization. Each organization is separate, like I said. It has its own auctions, donors, users, credit card, and social media. This is what it looks like on the page for organization within the Octria platform. So in the yellow, so I just clicked on organization on the left, and then it popped up. The yellow box under the organization is where you can add an auction manage the users for the organization and see your license and a few other housekeeping details. Across the top, circled in pink, almost looks like a chain there, um, you'll see, you'll see um, details, social media, logos, and connections. For the logos, you can update a logo like I said, for the organization, but if you wanna add a logo at the auction level, some groups wanna have a logo for each event to maybe include the calendar year, you can do that here. Connections is referring to email and Stripe. And I wanna go back to social media for a sec. Set up only the social media links that are kept current. The worst is to have a link to a social media that isn't updated and the last post is months ago or years ago. So only include the ones that you keep updated. Let's talk a little bit about credit card. Of course, with Octria, you can streamline bidder registration all the way through final payments when using credit card integration. And Octria supports credit card transactions from two industry leaders, Stripe.com and Authorize.net. Stripe's processing fees are 30 cents and 2.9% per transaction for North America. Um, they also have discounted pricing for 501c3 organizations. So if that applies to you, make sure you contact Stripe and receive their discount. Authorized.net is essentially using Octree as a gateway to your authorized.net account. Um, and I'm sure you have the pricing on their account also. Um, so bottom lining it, if you're not set up with a credit card vendor yet, Stripe is our suggested vendor. If you already use and love Authorize.net, then by all means connect and use them. In each case though, credit card numbers are saved securely with the payment processor and only a token is saved within Octria. Each are completely integrated and give you the safety and security and peace of mind that you're looking for. So setting up credit card integration test in live mode. Here's the high points in the Octria platform that you wanna take note of. You need to be able to collect payments, of course, after the auction concludes. So therefore you wanna set up the credit card integration. It's required. You wanna connect your Stripe account. 
You want to use the test in live processing modes if you want to do some testing. The default mode is live, by the way. And then you go ahead and you charge. Um, we can talk about charging for processing fees which leads us to this next page. You have two choices in handling credit card fees. The organization can either absorb the credit card fees or you can charge the bidder for the credit card fees. And there's two schools of thought here. Consider the credit card fees as the price of doing business and you don't want to nickel and dime the gen generous donors or donors want to make the donation whole. The default credit card fee handling mode is set to normal. And this means that the organization will absorb the external credit card processing fees and not pass the fees on automatically to the purchaser. If you clicked surcharge on that page, the bidder is charged the fee so that the deposit you see receive will match the amount of the original purchase and what is owed. Normal is what I would recommend, um, even though I'm not supposed to recommend, but I would recommend. Normal is, the, is where the bidder is not charged an amount above their purchase price to include the additional processing fee amount. However, when donors receive their request for payment, especially for online auctions, they have the option to voluntarily pay towards offsetting the credit card fees. Then it's really nice because this becomes a choice on behalf of the bidder. Okay, let's talk about setting up the auction itself. From the left, I've selected auction in the middle of the screen and then click new auction. And there's a spot to add a date. I do wanna take note here. The event date that you're adding in this field is more kind of informational so that we can keep your auctions organized within the platform. It doesn't impact any auction processing. And we'll talk about that in a second, how you set up your mobile, um, your, your online auction times. So you wanna click auction, add new auction. And the next step is your bidding time frame for online bidding. So I'm going and I'm sliding down to online mobile bidding and the mobile online bidding start and end time affects all auction items with a type set to online. So if your auction is completely online, every single one of your auctions will be set to online as your type. And as an aside, you can define times here. Um, sorry, this is defined for the entire auction with a master start and end time. If you want, you can set individual items with a separate start and end time. You're going to ask, why would I want to do that? Well, here, um, our schools, a couple of our schools are doing some spring fundraisers. And there's this amazing cultural event that goes on within our city. And it pretty much overlaps the end of the auction times. So they'll set that auction item to close a little earlier so that they can process the payment and get the proper paperwork to the winning bidder. So from the online bidding page, there are a few more options that you will wanna adjust and fine tune. There's the online bidding period that we talked about. There's the online bidding behavior. There's anti-sniping rules and notifications. Let's take a closer look at these. The online bidding period, like I said, is the overall start and end time for the entire event. And like I said, you can override these items on a per item basis. So be sure to put in a start time and an end time. I can't reiterate that as many times as possible. So online bidding behavior, this is how the bidder is going to interact with you. Let me highlight a couple things here. They are proxy bidding and whether or not you want to require a credit card to be registered to bid. That's always a talking point amongst auction teams. Should we require a credit card to bid? So powwow with your board and or treasurer to make a decision that fits your audience. If you know your people are good for the money, you may not wanna require credit cards to register and give bidders the benefit of the doubt. Requiring a credit card may be a barrier to entry that is completely unnecessary. As I scroll down the page to notifications, this is where you can make some elections that are um, 
designed for your group. You can send high bid notifications, raise bid notifications, item one notifications. So go ahead and take a look at all those and make sure you set, the, you set them to what you expect the um, notifications to be. So online auction booster is one of my favorites is proxy bidding. The default here is yes. And I recommend, in, recommend leaving that as is. However, you might wanna share what this means to bidders because you may get some questions. So we didn't invent proxy bidding. And when I say we, I mean Octria, but we did perfect it for online auction fundraising. A more descriptive term for proxy bidding might be automatic bidding. So proxy bidding accelerates the bidding so the bids go higher faster and the greater the number of bids, the higher the auction fundraiser proceeds. So why would you want to offer proxy bidding? Proxy bidding allows bidders to set the highest price that they are willing to pay for an auction item without having to babysit their bidding. When offering proxy bidding, auction fundraising administrators have found that auction items do go for higher prices. And why would a bidder want to use proxy bidding? You find an auction item you truly want to win. The bidding starts and you have a pretty good idea that it's going to escalate with time. In a traditional bidding scenario, you'll have to wait to get outbid, then place the next highest bid. And who knows if that's going to be convenient for you as this goes round and round. Proxy bidding is so much more efficient for the bidder also. They can place a private proxy bid for the maximum amount they're willing to pay and let the system rebid up as necessary. The system will keep the actual bid as low as possible, yet provide a path to remain the winner if the bidding stays within the proxy amount. If the bids do go higher than the proxy amount, the proxy bidder can rebid to a higher fee, to a higher number. So if you're running an online auction, make sure this is on your to-do list. My second favorite is anti-sniping. Um, this bidding feature is great also. Have you ever been participating in an online auction, whether it be a fundraiser or eBay, and the bidding is closing, and then there's a surge in activity, and the winner is the one that got that very last bid in in the last second before the auction closes? The winning bidder, of course, is super happy. But if you're an auction fundraiser, you want to know how much higher could the bids have gone? We at Octria call these bidders snipers. And the answer to that is the anti-sniping feature. Again, we didn't invent it, but we did perfect it for auction fundraising. You want to use anti-sniping to capitalize on the nature of the online auctions. When using anti-sniping, if a bid is placed within a set time right before the auction item closes, it opens a trigger window to lengthen or open longer for that particular item for an extended time frame. This continues if additional bids are placed or closes if no bids to follow. So that's why I have that clock there. Ordinarily, the auction would close at 10, but if an auction, I, excuse me, if a sniper bid comes in just before 9.55, it pushes the clock open further, allowing for additional bids. So here's how you set that up within the Octria program. To match the clock on the previous page, this is what it would look like in platform. This is the anti-sniping page. All you need to do is to define the anti-sniping trigger window in minutes and the anti-sniping extension in, win in minutes. Okay, we're gonna move along to setting up the auction event notifications. So this is all in that same section and you just continue to um, move along, move down, click the drop down, and then see the options. There's lots of choices for notifications. So read through each to make sure it matches your expectations. I want to talk a little bit about item categories because it's quickly, it's amazing how quickly auction items come in and how quickly the item list grows. So let me introduce you to item categories. The purpose of item categories is for you as an admin to better organize the experience for the bidder. And you're going to see why in a second. Categories give a nice structure to the auction catalog. So items aren't just in there willy nilly. 
The quicker bidders can find something, the quicker they can place a bid. So typical category examples we see used are restaurants, travel, events, entertainment, and so on. You can, molt, you can add as many as you need. So from the bidder's view, here I selected off the website, I selected events and you can see those, the, the drop down on the right is all the categories that this group has set up, chose events and then it brings up just the events. So bidders can quickly access their favorites. And here's a hot tip on the Octria app for mobile bidding, bidders can use the category scroll wheel at the bottom also, and they really get quick access to their favorite auction items they're most interested in. In this example, I pulled up electronics as a category, and you can see that highlighted on the scroll wheel. The less scrolling should convert to more bidding. Okay, I'm gonna go over this part kind of quickly because um, the most important part is how to add a donor. So you go to donor on the left, that brings you to the donors page, and then you do add new donor and add in the pertinent details. Same thing for items. On the left, scroll all the way down to items, click add new item, add the pertinent details, including value, description, and images. What's really cool is Octria has a built-in all auction pricing policy. I call this auction planning without a calculator. The pricing policy saves time by setting up the starting bid, minimum bid, and increments for your auction items. Have you? What I suggest is you have another conversation amongst your auction team to agree upon some guidelines. Opinions on pricing items tends to shift as the auction gets closer also. So fair warning here, pricing settings can be set globally. However, when doing so, it applies to the current items that are in the system at that exact moment in time. It will not continue to apply pricing rules to new items added. You would either have to reapply the pricing rule or set the extra items manually. So I highly recommend to add all or almost all your items and then apply the pricing policy towards the end when mostly everything is loaded and complete. Let's talk a little bit about bidders. With Octria, there are no limits on the number of bidders that you can have registered for your auction. You can register bidders individually through an auction website, which you'll set up for an online auction. You can import them from Excel and bidders can register themselves if you enable online bidder registration. Before the bidding begins, bidders obviously need to register and registration will provide them with a bidder number used throughout the bidding process. Through the years, we've received lots of requests to handle bidder registration. Thus, there are multiple drop-down options that you can choose and configure and fine tune. So you wanna click on each of those arrows to open the section and view the configuration options. I wanna examine the three most relevant to an auction, to an online auction. You've got your online bidder registration, registration contact options, and then online payment options. So I got to this page just by flipping the arrow on the online bidder registration page. The online bidder registration configurations are pretty much self-explanatory with start and end times, opt-in for text. The most important is to change enable online bidder registration to yes. And you don't have to worry, I'm gonna send you um, these slides. You can watch this back on playback and I've got some really cool checklists for you too. So you wanna enable online bidder registration to yes. You're gonna click the pencil and adjust the fields. The next two are also straightforward, but I wanna bring them to your attention. You've got registration contact and options. So the Octria system requires two things for a bidder to actually partake in an auction. One of them is a name and the second one is an email and that's it. Optional at your discretion, you can also request an address, a phone number, etc. But remember, try to request the least amount of information that you need to encourage and not discourage registrations. 
Okay, so you got the organization set up, the donors, the items, the bidders. Now you wanna work on the dedicated website. Don't worry, you can make this super easy with one of our pre-made templates and call it done. But if you wanna invest a little bit of time, invite one of the creative people on your team to make the website really sparkle because there's options galore in terms of configurations for colors and fonts and images and carousels of images. You can even post a video and the auction catalog can also be modified in ways of sorting and viewing and um, sizes of, of item cards. And I have a complete webinar just on the website. So if you want to send that person to that webinar, it's already um, been recorded and you can watch it on playback. So let's just start with the basics. So I'm sliding down on the left. I'm clicking on website in the main auction dashboard and it will display a default that says create website options. There's many to choose from. However, I'm gonna limit them to the two that you'll probably use for your online auction. These templates are ready and turnkey operations for an online auction. And they say basic online bidding template. Here is an example of an online auction that had run in December. And you can see how pretty they made their header image as well as their background image. I wanna talk a little bit about the Octria app. The Octria app is a designed, dedicated bidding tool. It's not for administration management, it's just a mobile app for digital bidding, like a digital bidding paddle. Bidders must register online and then they can see everything on the mobile app. And what's really cool is the notifications come in immediately. As soon as you get outbid, bam, it zaps you and it tells you and you can quickly make a, an a, uh, additional bid. The Altria app is available for Apple and Android devices. And like I said, when using the app, the bidders can view the catalog, place bids, place proxy bids, and those outbid no notifications come in fast. So it makes bids hot, soar higher, faster. I highly recommend this for events where you're um, scattered at maybe a silent or, or a sporting event or a carnival for a school, or of course, for an online event. So here's a close up look of the front page of a sample auction on a mobile device from the bidder's point of view. Remember, think of this as a bidding tool, kind of an electronic bidder panel, bidder handle, excuse me. Bidders can view the catalog, place bids, get their notifications. What's really cool, they can even star their favorite items that they're watching. And then they have the ability to sort by their starred items, items they're winning, items they've bid on, and items they've been outbid on. So the mobile device is an awesome tool to help you maximize and optimize your auction fundraising. And even though I was talking about setting up an online auction, we have to close the circle here. And we'll talk about closeout and collections. When the online items close, there will be an item one notification sent to the winner, but nothing else. If someone bids on an item and they do not win, they would not get, they would, they would only get the outbid notification at that point when they were outbid. So let's do a deeper dive here. I wanna travel back to the online bidding setup page. The last segment I was talked about was notifications. To make everything easy for you, you'll find two important options that are already checked for you. See, we already did the work for you. You've got your send item one notifications and the send one item notifications to the winning bidder's email automatically at the end of the online bidding. And it says include a payment link in the item one notifications. So this includes a personalized link allowing the bidder to play online. This will only be enabled if credit card processing is enabled for your account, which you're a whiz already and you're automatically going to do it. So any outstanding balances can also be resent on bidder statements if you need uh, later in the day, later in the week, um, whenever, whenever you would need to do it. So if you send 
and item one notification, you're including the payment button and bidders can pay when it's most convenient. And it's the easiest way to handle online auction closeout is to let the system and the bidders do it for you. So I want to recap. No, you do not have to close an online auction. At the defined end time, the auction will close automatically, except if there's a couple of those uh, anti-snipings that are going on, They'll, that'll extend for those items. The highest bidder is awarded the winner and the item notifications will automatically be sent out with a payment link. So like my happy little doggy friend there, you can just sit back and watch the dashboard tally the closeout. You'll see the numbers move swiftly as the auction closes and then as bidders click the make payment button. So as you can see, we really mean that when we say from first donation to last receipt and all the bidding in between, Octria does make it easy. I did create a um, getting started checklist as well as a go live checklist. And I have a quick little video here to show you kind of what they look like. So that's just a quickie of what the um, checklists look like. Those will be included in the email, in the resources after the end of this presentation, which is wrapping up pretty rapidly. So here are the resource links that'll be included in the follow-up email so that you can watch the playback. You can grab those checklists and then you can click on any of the resource links. And it is my pleasure to um, thank you for joining us. Stay connected with us offline and online also. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Um, Facebook and Twitter, we update daily. On Pinterest, we have over 500 pins and those go directly to donation request pages. You can always email us, hello at octria.com. And I always suggest if you want to try something out new and you don't mess around with your data, you can do so on our demo. It's <music>